In Better Travel today, we are talking about hodophobia. What is hodophobia? It's an intense fear of traveling, and one person who traveled across the Atlantic despite being hodophobic is Beth Daigle. So how did it go? Well, she wrote a book about it, and it's called Musing Mediterranean, Fun, Family, and Faraway Places Transform an Anxious Traveler. <laughs> We're so happy to have you Thank here. You. In I, I love the idea that you had a phobia and yes. you decided, I'm just going to go face my fear <laughs> and write a book about it. That's right. And I think the book actually did help process a little bit of those emotions. Uh, so, And I like that you referenced it as hodophobia because it really is what it is versus my initial take on it was aerophobia. I'm afraid of flying. Okay. okay. That happened kind of later in life when 9-11 hit and I uh -huh. watched those. Uh, so uh, that's where I wanted mm -hmm. to start. And, and as a child, did you have any fears of no. No, no, and I traveled quite a bit when I was younger in my um, marketing role, and I traveled mostly nationwide, and I had no problem with that. I'm all. actually a pretty strong personality in that way. Right. So the travel anxiety really struck me. I On that particular day, watching those events unfold on television, yeah, I had a six-month-old daughter, mm -hmm. uh, my firstborn, and I, I just kind of, that broke me a little bit in yeah. terms of my desire to travel. And thankfully, I did not lose anyone close to me that day, so my fear just stemmed from the reaction to it. And it stayed with you though, because you it's would try and here. plan trips, yeah. it's still here. So that's what I was yeah. wondering is, uh, does it go away or, or what happens to you? I can process it and I work through my own coping me mechanisms, but for the most part I travel because my family loves it and they are not afraid. My children are not afraid, right. my husband wants to travel. And so the guilt uh, associated with that gets me there and I do love it once I'm there and this book is really what that's about, that once I'm past the fear, right. I so enjoy seeing the world. But are you are, are you worried about the trip home, the, the entire trip that you're there? Are you thinking Not, about that? No. When I'm there, I can immerse myself in the places that I'm seeing, the destination. Okay, so you're living in I the moment. And I do think about the trip home a little bit at the end. I will say on this particular journey, I was so exhausted after two weeks of ambitious touring that I went home with less fear because... I just couldn't focus on it. I was exhausted. <laughs> so some people would say, well, I just have a phobia, and so therefore I can't do it. I can't even step out. Right. I can't even, uh, how do you get past, you know, some people are just too anxious to get on the plane. Or they're too, right. How do you get past it? That's right. I, and I am not that far along yeah. in my fear. It's there, but it's not preventing me from doing things. However, there are certain things that I do just to kind of process. I use the art of distraction. So that for me is something very helpful where I focus heavily on other things in order to avoid thinking about it. And the book talks a lot about the fact that I avoid the planning process, which has you focusing so much on the trip itself okay. that if I were to be involved in the planning, I think I would start, that would build my anxiety. So I let my family, in this particular case especially, plan the entire trip and <laughs> I just go, go later. I go along for the ride and yeah. I enjoy it once I'm there. I've been to the Institute of Living and I've done stories on people who come in for um, it's, it's w w what they call uh, exposure, em therapy. exposure therapy. They yes. put you in front of a flight simulator. Right. Have you done anything like that? I've not done anything like Do that. Do you think you would be open to something like that? You know. Do you think it would help you? It probably would help me. I think anything that would get me to address this more specifically. Right. I'm, some of my coping mechanisms are so off the mark. You know, when I'm on the plane and I start to get nervous or anxious, I zone in on all the flight attendants to look at their expressions and see if I can read their feelings. Right, exactly. And it's just little things like that have helped me and, you know, a couple of glasses of wine to settle down <laughs> have done the trick, okay. but that's as far as I've gone. So the book is about you traveling, getting on the plane, or is it about when you got there? So I call it a full travel experience, but really it is about getting there. And it talks a lot about the places that we visited in Greece, Italy, and Turkey. So it's a very fun-loving book. It's very lighthearted, despite it starting from basically a panic attack. Mm -hmm. It really, once I've moved past that, it really becomes about the places that I'm seeing and experiencing. And I think the message in the book overall is that it is so worth it. So if you yeah. have travel anxiety, 
do what you can, do what works for you to come through it because seeing the world is a gift. Yeah, yeah. It really we're, is. we're almost out of time, but do, do you know, do a lot of people have this? Is it common? Oh, it's absolutely common. And I think more so now that there's so many things happening, mm -hmm. um, you know, in different parts of the world that are scary. Yeah. And so getting yeah. there is sometimes as, as big a challenge as anything else. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. We thank appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. All right. Uh, you can learn more about Beth on her website. It's bethdaigle.com. You can purchase her book there. You can also get it on amazon.com.